Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday, November 13th. I am Pastor Laura, the pastor for the Southern Albemarle Church. That is Mount Zion United Methodist and Scottsville United Methodist. And I am so glad that you are worshiping with us today. I invite us to center ourselves for this time of worship. Perhaps light a candle like we light one signifying how Christ is in our midst. Maybe also just closing our eyes for a moment. Listen to the silence. Breathe in God and breathe out the stresses of the week. And let us pray. Most gracious God, you crown the year with your goodness. We praise you that you have ever fulfilled your promise that while earth remains, sea time and harvest shall not cease. We bless you for the order and constancy of nature, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, and for the providence that year by year supplies our need. We thank you for your blessing on the work of those who plowed the soil and sowed the seed and have now gathered in the fruits of the earth. And with our thanksgiving for these blessings, accept our praise, O God, for the eternal riches of your grace in Christ our Lord, to whom with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor and worship forever and ever. Amen. And let us join together and sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
first scripture reading is Psalm 100. Listen for the word of God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. We are celebrating Thanksgiving a little early this year, but that's okay because it's always a good thing for us to give thanks. And I have some devotional apps on my phone that I like to use, and one of these encourages me to name five things that I am grateful for every day. Now, I am a little embarrassed to admit this, but Sometimes I get stumped trying to think of five new things every day that I am grateful for. But I also don't think I'm alone in this, that it sometimes takes me a little bit of hard thinking to remember what to be grateful for. Because I do know that we can, we can get so caught up in the busyness of life, in the stress of life, that sometimes we forget about all that we have that is good all of the blessings that have happened. We normally can remember those big things, but what about the small, ordinary, day in and day acts, day out acts of blessing? Do we remember those things and are we grateful? I'm reminded of last week with All Saints Sunday and how we celebrated the saints and their every day, day in and day out, tiny acts, of love. Now this week, we are giving thanks for those acts of God's love in our lives, whether they are the really big ones or those tiny, faithful acts. We've also spent time over the last month listening to Paul's encouragement for our lives of discipleship. And I thought it would be good to hear what Paul has to say about gratitude. And our reading for today comes from another letter that Paul wrote. We have spent some time in the letter to the Corinthians, and now we are moving to the letter to the church of Philippi. So this is a reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Listen for the word of God. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. So whenever I hear this passage, my, my stomach will at least some of the time start to twist and turn. Give thanks to God in everything? How? But as I have found with that devotional app, it is possible to always name something we are thankful for. Even if it's something as simple as giving thanks for a non-congested breath, or waking up without a crick in our neck, to something larger, like giving thanks for God's faithfulness, for the assurance that God is always with us and walks with us even in the darkest of times. And Paul is right, that when we focus on whatever is 
true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent. When we focus on the good around us, then we can find it easier to give thanks. This doesn't mean we are blind to the challenges of life. It doesn't mean we bury our heads in the sand when difficulties around arise. It doesn't mean that we ignore the problems around us. But it does mean that we seek the good. It does mean that we know that the worst thing is not the last thing. And it does mean that we have a partner in God who is willing to help us overcome those obstacles and find peace in the love, strength, and mercy of God. This is what we are able to give thanks for. So what are we grateful for? And let's try to push ourselves beyond the usual answers of family and friends. I'm grateful for a cup of hot tea. The calmness I feel when I drink it in the mornings, how a nice cup of peppermint or lemon tea can settle my stomach if I've eaten too much for dinner. I'm grateful for the play equipment that my parents bought at the beginning of the pandemic when all the playgrounds were shut down. And then they let us have it when we moved here. So now it sits in our front yard and as I wrote my sermon, I could hear my kids and their friends laughing and playing on that equipment. I am grateful for the bare patch of ground that is in our backyard. That's where my garden was this summer and I am grateful because it reminds me of my dad who came and tilled the ground for us. I'm grateful for my husband working with me in the garden. I am grateful for the many servings of fried okra that I cooked and for the pickled cucumbers that garnished my salads and sandwiches this summer. I am grateful for the anticipation of a future bounty. These may seem like simple things, but they are good things, pleasing and pure things. They are things to name and to be grateful for. Now, I invite us today to share what we are grateful for. Write it in the comments to the video. Share with one another, all of us who are worshiping together online. Share something that we are grateful for. And as we prepare ourselves to do that, I want to share with us two testimonies from inmates, two inmates that participate in our Hope Beyond the Bars ministry. These are two testimonies of thanksgiving. Um, and I have the honor to correspond with these inmates regularly, and they allow me to share their thanksgiving with all of us. So this is a first one from a gentleman that I correspond with. He writes, I have witnessed God's love with the transfer that took place last year because I received my high school diploma. I also got enrolled in a paralegal course and I met my fiance. All of this started to happen last year and fully manifested itself this year. I am truly great, thankful for all of the blessings which I have received from God and my Christian family that I have opened up and have allowed in my life. You may share this testimony of mine with others because I know God's love is real and is true. And then the second testimony is from a lady. She writes, This past year has been full of blessings for me. The biggest blessing is that I got to see exactly how much all of the little things and some of the big ones mean to me. This year, I saw grass for the first time in years. I may have threatened to eat it. I was so excited. I also saw the moon and felt rain this year. Both made me cry. When I was first locked up, I was a pagan, and the lack of nature in jail made me realize that my false gods could not follow me into that place. I stepped out of my comfort zone and tried to bargain with God to get me home. Turns out the things I said I would do have come to fruition this year. They came not as a means to get what I want, but exactly as I would want them to happen for their own sake. My son was baptized this year. 
I did not have to resort to actually eating grass because I was served vegetables every day. I was never so excited about sweet potatoes. My roommate said I probably didn't need to hoard 20 of them, but I was so used to going without good food that I forgot what it was like to have enough. I had just finished reading my Bible the very evening that I and my closest friends got picked up for prison. I can remember saying, well, I finished my Bible, we can go to prison now. And lo and behold, God came and proved as he had so many times this year that he has his hands all over my life. Since then, I found out that the man whose life I ended chose to give that life to Christ that very day. Imagine how crazy it is that I was able to find that out. The officer from whom my mom picked up my stuff went to church with this man, and he told her the story. God called that man knowing that it was his last chance, and he took it. Knowing that is one of the greatest blessings I will ever have. A hot shower, some paint, a pillow, fuzzy socks, vegetables, a window. These are some small things I have this year that I didn't have last year. And I've been blessed enough to go without them long enough to realize that literally everything is a blessing. All of it. Every breath. Thanks for listening and count your blessings. I give thanks for those two testimonies. And so again, I ask us, what are we grateful for? And I invite us to share that. Thanks be to God for all of the blessings in our lives. Amen. Looking ahead at the activities in the life of our church, um, we are beginning our Advent study, November 30th and December 1st. We'll continue with the Wednesday morning in-person option at Scotts Hills Fellowship Hall from 10 to 11.30, or the Thursday evening from 7 to 8.30. We are doing our study based on a book called The Redemption of Scrooge, where we look at the lessons we can learn from Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol and how, and how we can tie that to scripture and to our faith. Um, if you are interested in a digital online version of this study, please put that in the um, Google form that we have a link to in the description of the video. Let me know um, and we'll be able to work something out. I also want us to remember today that this past week we honored our veterans and so we give thanks to veterans for their service and we do want to remember them in prayer as we now turn to a time of prayer, remembering to give thanks for the veterans, remembering all of the joys and the concerns that we have shared. And so let us pray. Holy Lord, thank you. Thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. Thank you for all of those small and simple ways that we have to be grateful, those small and simple blessings, Lord. Thank you. We do give you thanks for our veterans and we pray for them. We pray for the safety of all who serve. We pray for those who are struggling now that they are back home. Those who struggle with mental illness, those who struggle due to injury. We pray for healing and for hope that you surround them and strengthen them with your love. And we pray for their families that you strengthen and support them too, Lord. And may they know that our prayers are with them. We pray too for those we know who are injured, who are recovering from surgeries, who are sick. Pour your spirit of healing out upon them. Pour your spirit of peace upon those who are still awaiting test results or next steps from doctors and give the doctors your wisdom. And we pray for those who mourn. Comfort them in their grief. Lord, we pray for those who have been affected by recent disasters, the tornadoes in Texas and Oklahoma, those affected by the tropical storm. 
those who continue to have to rebuild after the recent storms of this fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for them all. And now, God, in this time of silence, we hold before you the unspoken concerns and joys of our hearts. And as we sit in your presence, help us to listen to you. We pray in your Son's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. I do want to thank everyone, too, for your continued generosity. Um, at Scottsville United Methodist, we are in our pledge season. So if you are interested in completing a pledge card, um, either drop a line in the comments or on that Google form, and we can get one to you. But this is a time where we do think about um, what, we, what we have and what we can offer as a way of giving thanks to God for all that God has done. So thank you for your generosity. And um, if you do want to send an offering in, you can send that to the office at Scottsville, and we'll make sure it gets to the appropriate church. And our address is PO Box 280, Scottsville, Virginia, 24590. And that address is in the video description. Let us pray. God, thank you. Thank you for these gifts that we have received, those we will receive. Thank you for the generosity of the givers, and we pray your blessings upon them and us so that we can use those gifts to continue to spread your blessings to our community and the world. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And let us sing our hymn of thanksgiving and praise. We call it the doxology. Our closing hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. Let us sing.
Receive the benediction. Lord, send us forth mindful of all that we have to be grateful for. Send us forth with hearts of gratitude, ready to share that good news of blessings and of thanksgiving. We go now in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>